One issue that often confuses students is when you're calculating the standard deviation, do you divide by n or n minus 1? This would be because you might have had this debate at school. Huge amount of time is wasted in stats courses at school debating which to use. If you divide by n, it's called the standard deviation of the sample. If you divide by n minus 1, it's called the standard deviation of the population. In both cases, the way you work out the standard deviation is you take every value, subtract off the mean, square it. Next value, take a, subtract off the mean, square it. Add all those up and divide by either n, which is the number of observations, or n minus 1. Now, this is actually a complete waste of time as an argument. Um, I'm going to give you the simple answer for which to use, a slightly less simple but still pretty simple answer, and then if you're still interested I'll tell you a more complicated explanation. Now the simple answer is, use this one. Standard deviation of the sample is kind of a mathematical curiosity, but for any practical purpose this is the one you want. So if you have two buttons on your calculator, pick the standard deviation of the population, divide by n minus 1. That's the one you want, at least in this course, and for almost any application, any field, it's the useful one. That's the simplest answer. Slightly more complicated. Uh, it actually makes no difference. Now, the standard deviation is a measure of how scattered your data is. And unless you've got a fairly big data set, it's pretty useless, it's pretty inaccurate. So you'd only actually bother calculating a standard deviation if you've got quite a lot of data points, if n is quite big. Otherwise it's hideously inaccurate. Try to measure a standard deviation from three or four points, it's a waste of time. You'd want at least 10, ideally 100. And when you've got n large, like 100, the difference between 1 over the square root of n and 1 over the square root of n minus 1 is tiny. So it makes very little difference to the answer, and almost certainly there are other effects which are much more important. There'll be other uncertainties that are much bigger than that, so spend your time worrying about something that matters, not this poxy little difference between n and n minus 1. Now, if all you want is practical guidance, that's all I'm going to give you. Use this one, and it makes sort of difference even if you use that one, it's not going to affect anything that really matters. If you really care about the difference, keep watching, otherwise you can stop now. What is the difference? Well, typically when you measure the standard deviation, you're trying to measure something about the world. For example, what's the uncertainty in this measurement? What's the range of speeds? And that is the underlying probability distribution function. So what you're really trying to measure is the standard deviation of that underlying probability distribution function, which is the letter sigma. If you want to measure that, this is the most accurate way to do it. But you might only have like 10 data points, and those 10 data points might just by chance have a bigger scatter or a smaller scatter. And if what you care about is not the true probability distribution function sigma, but just the standard deviation of the 10 points you have, then that's the one to use. So if you care about the real world, this is the one to use. If you just care about your particular sample of 10 or whatever it is data points, that's the one to use. As people are almost never bothered about the particular 10 measurements you made, but actually want to find out about the real world, that's why this one is always the one to use. This one's really just a mathematical curiosity of no practical importance.